Hello, my lovelies. This is Jenny from Jenny's Fun Facts. We just want to take a moment to thank you so much, Pete Eats Meal Preps, for sponsoring our episodes. New menu out every Friday, order by Sunday, delivered fresh by Tuesday. And guess what? They deliver to all Montreal surrounding areas as well. Healthy, fresh, and delivered to your door for free. Add them and our podcast on Instagram at p.eats underscore p as in Peter, R E P as in Peter, S. Thanks, P Eats Meal Preps. to Noon Hour Out of the Box, episode 31, and the first episode of the new year. We are so happy to be back, and we so, so are happy with your continued love and support from the audience. It's been amazing. A huge thank you to Jenny DeHame, the producer of the show, who, of course, makes all this happen, and to my incredible co-host, my mentor and good friend, Mr. Robert D'Alessio. How are you, Robert? Esther, as always, I'm totally excited. And a happy new year to you and to all of our viewing audience. Um, I'm a little excited today because we have something new going on and it's a new project and it's going to be extremely entertaining and the audience is going to be very well served. Yes, absolutely. We partnered up with uh, althealth.me and they are a new social media platform that uh, has a space for uh, people with chronic illnesses, and they will provide support. And uh, it's just a wonderful, a wonderful new platform. So we're so excited to be connected with them. It's a wonderful life, just like uh, the yeah. movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, Esther, listen, uh, I, I meant to ask you, uh, I know something really unfortunate happened to you in the past days, and this is something you wanted to share with the audience. So feel free to tell us about uh, what happened that's very unfortunate. Okay, so this is kind of a public service announcement. I recently got hacked on my Instagram account. So if you get a, a DM from me asking for help or talking about Bitcoin, it is not me. Unfortunately, someone approached me. I thought I was helping a friend. And in turn, it ended up being a, a scam and a hacker who basically took over my account. So unfortunately, they are contacting everyone on my friend list. Uh, good friends. I mean, I've gotten calls from so many people. It is not me. I am working to get it back. So please, please be careful. Do not fall for anything that comes from Instagram from me about any of those subjects. That, that is just so maddening. Um, you know, I, I don't know. People just don't have better things to do. And I'm going to hold back because I can really belt out what my thoughts are. But, you know, for the sake of our professionalism, I keep smiling and Esther, just letting you know that our thoughts go out with you, and I'm going to make a bold prediction as oh, a psychic. Yes. Oh, You're ooh. going to get your account back. It's going to go well, right? Don't worry uh, about it. Thank you. That is so kind of you. Needless to say, I had a horrible migraine. So I do have a, <clears throat> a chronic illness. I've had migraines since I was 25, and uh, yes, they've creeped up on me, I guess, because of the stress. And interestingly enough, and there's an article came out recently about older millennials and chronic illness. It's interesting because I developed my migraines at 25. Oh. Um, so it, it's a, a lot of information there about what's going on now with that generation. And we put together a little bit of a slideshow just to briefly go over um, what the studies have shown and what they have to say. So it's quite interesting. I just wanted to share it with all you guys. So basically about 44% of older millennials born between 1981 and 1988 report having been diagnosed with at least one chronic health condition, according to a survey conducted by the Harris Poll. Chronic health conditions can take a toll, both financially and emotionally. And unfortunately, as the oldest millennials start to hit 40, many are finding themselves coping with chronic health conditions, more so than previous generations. 
So hypertension, diabetes, and obesity drives a lot of the chronic illnesses and the obesity epidemic may be probably the root cause of the rise in rates of hypertension, diabetes, and even certain types of cancers. Now studies show that millennials are actually far less likely to be smokers. So diseases related to that are actually a lot less common. The prevalence of these diseases not only affects the millennials' health and lifespan, but also their bank accounts. Studies show those with at least one chronic condition spend twice as much and on out-of-pocket healthcare expenses than those without any health issues. Those with two concurrent chronic health issues spend five times as much. Yes, yeah, so beyond out-of-pocket spending, millennials with a chronic health condition also could see their annual income reduced by as much as $4,500 per person due to medical expenses and even reduced work hours or job loss because of poor health. And finally, if this trend continues, then you'll have higher health care costs. You'll be exchanging the baby boomer, boomer generation for a generation with even higher health care costs just because of normal inflation and the fact that these chronic diseases are there. Yes, absolutely, Robin. And from an anecdotal perspective, you know, I noticed that my kids and their friends, they they all, my, my daughter has IBS. There's a, many of her friends have similar conditions. There's asthma, uh, of course, migraines, and we're seeing more and more, uh, even anxiety disorders. I mean, that's talked a lot, uh, rather a lot by that particular generation. So there is something going on. And, uh, you know, according to that article that we based our slides are they're, they're explaining where some of it comes from. So I want to introduce our guest who is from Alt Health ME, Jeff Davis. Jeff is a lawyer, serial entrepreneur and best-selling author. He is the co-founder of AltHealth.me, which is a new social media platform and marketplace for people who struggle with chronic health issues. Let's bring him on. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mr. Jeff Dennis. Hey, how are you? Hey guys. Yeah, I'm great. Uh, it's actually warmed up here today, so uh, it's a little better. Yesterday was just brutally cold, but uh, things, are, things are looking brighter. So uh, looking forward to a great 2022. Oh, yes. I'm hoping that as well. So it's so interesting that you are an entrepreneur, you're a lawyer. Um, you also have a best-selling book, actually several books. So you have such an interesting background. So Jeff, tell us something about yourself that would surprise us. Well, that book actually was like a passport around the world. And um, when, when it first came out, this is now quite a while ago, 17 years ago, uh, I ended up speaking to a entrepreneurial group in Kathmandu, Nepal. Wow. So the book really took me all over the world and uh, allowed me to go to really incredible destinations and uh, learn a lot about business and about the world. So um, I guess that's something you wouldn't know. No, I would not. So tell us about the new platform, althealth.me. So... In a nutshell, it's uh, we're trying to create a safe place for people who struggle with chronic conditions, you know, diabetes, Lyme disease, uh, IBS, um, you name it, um, where they can come and find solutions, find support. And then we're also introducing a marketplace where they can find relevant products and services. Um, what makes us different is that our our community, our, our, the members of our community will be able to share these products and solutions like influencers and earn money. So rather than the money going to big tech and big pharma, it's going to the community to help support and build the community. So it's really a, a, really a unique model and we're really excited about it. Uh, we're just getting started, but we already have 13 channels and we wow. hope to have 30 I don't know when that'll be, but certainly um, before 2023 rolls around. So we're hard at work and really excited about building each one of these channels. So think about uh, alt health like Facebook, I suppose, yes. where people will have like a news feed 
and it'll be articles and other content created by our community about various issues. But in addition, we're going to have channels and each channel is like a Facebook group where it's, you know, about a particular condition. So there'll be a diabetes channel and a Lyme channel and so on. And in those channels, we hope to be able to create a safe place uh, where people can share information, share, support one another. Um, and we're really, really excited about it because we think there's a big, big demand. There's a huge need for this, you know, for the reason you said at the start of the show that, you know, it's a, it's a big and growing problem that many people deal with. And, uh, but, but the other problem is that it's, it, people feel like Facebook and other social media platforms are, are censoring their content and that their algorithms aren't really aligned with what they're trying to discover. And so we're trying, we don't have the money for the fancy algorithms. Right. So, uh, you know, we're going to be, our algorithm is chronology you know, last in is first up and, and over time it'll go. Um, so that, that's really the goal. And uh, we're looking for people to help us in so many different ways to build the community. I think it's a wonderful idea. And I'm curious as what made you decide to start this channel? Well, it's kind of the confluence of a bunch of different aspects of my life. You heard that I'm an entrepreneur and a yes. lawyer. Um, and so I, and the kind of lawyer I am, I see lots of technology and I'm, I'm, I'm a tech lawyer. So I work with, you know, blockchain companies and artificial intelligence companies and fintech and clean tech and med tech. And so that's my day to day. So I found uh, somebody with a really unique software called shop type, which enables this type of community and this type of marketplace. Uh, so if you think of WordPress as, you know, you can build a website out of a box with shop type, we can build a social media community and marketplace out of a box. So um, you take that sort of aha moment together with my sort of entrepreneurial thing. But the third piece of the puzzle is that our son uh, for the last 10 years has struggled with Lyme disease. Awesome. And it's been a challenge for him and for us. And, you know, the, the slideshow that you showed really resonated, res uh, resonated with me uh, because that was our life and his life for the last 10 years. Now, he's doing better. He's not necessarily 100 percent, but certainly he's found solutions. But everything that we learned was on Facebook. Hmm. And was was through the network and the community of people who struggle with Lyme. In fact, my wife ended up writing a book. Her book's called Lyme Madness. And it really chronicled, you know, his, our experience and what we learned so that other people, when they sort of get into that morass, have at least somewhere to start and then take it from there. And so we're very familiar with dealing with chronic illness. And we know the problems and challenges with finding solutions on Facebook and we know the cost. And so when I put sort of all those pieces of my life together, you know, I had this big sort of aha moment that we could create this incredible community where it's really a safe place to, to discover and to explore and to learn about these, uh, chronic Ill issues. So you, you talk about a need for a safe space. What is the problem with the status quo right now? Well, you know, I'm a, a lawyer, not a, a software engineer, but, right. um, you know, if you listen to the public and you listen to people, they're trying different things out like signal or like telegram or yeah. like discord because they have this perception that facebook is they're, they're censoring them and they're that they've got this algorithm and um and that they're not getting what they should be getting and they don't know why and they don't trust it and so they're looking for alternatives but the other alternatives just don't stack up because they're just giant chats 
So we're trying to give a much richer experience. You know, Alt Health has all the functionality of any social media network. You can post, you can share, you can like, you can comment, you can uh, create events. I mean, you created an event for this podcast on Alt Health. Right. So it really has a full range of functionality uh, to create a community. And so we're doing it one channel at a time. Um, and we're looking for channel champions, people who, you know, have an interest and a passion for that issue and can bring their network and their knowledge to bear to help us curate the right products for that channel, uh, to bring in the right media and content and uh, audience. Um, and so my goal is to have 30 champions for 30 channels one for each of these chronic conditions wow so what chronic illnesses are you specifically focusing on and why those illnesses well i mean we started with lyme disease i guess right. selfishly um and then we you know took a look at wh where the problems are like where's the demand and so you know issues like diabetes like anxiety and depression uh, and its and its sister problem, uh, burnout in the workforce, um, you know, fitness and rehab and physical therapy. Um, there's there's really, uh, I mean, we, we could be here all day uh, <laughs> talking about the different kinds of channels. Um, some of them, people come forward like they've heard about Alt Health and said, hey, so I, for example, we've got a isometric fitness channel. <clears throat> oh, it cool. So that channel, you know, a friend of mine, a guy who actually was my personal trainer is also an inventor and he created this machine called Isofit that is a um is a is a isometric fitness machine. And I'm not an expert so I'm not going to try and explain it beyond that. Okay. But the benefit of isometric fitness is that it's there's not the pounding and of running and and movement because you're exercising mm -hmm. against a fixed stable object and using the stability so anyhow people who struggle with arthritis and people who have diabetes and people who they all could benefit from this type of fitness so he's launching a isometric fitness channel where there'll be all sorts of articles and videos and information about that type of rehabilitation and fitness and then he'll sell his product on the marketplace but other direct to consumer solutions can come on board as well and, and offer themselves to the marketplace that's so interesting so you keep referring to a marketplace tell us about the marketplace so i, I wish i could show it to you but yeah. we're, we're still in uh in under construction of course. Right. We're, we're, our goal is to launch it by February 1st, um, but it's essentially going to be a curated marketplace of products and services that are relevant to this space. So one we're working on right now, um, my daughter happens to be a chiropractor. And uh, so she works with uh, rehabilitating athletes, people with arthritis, all sorts of problems. She's also an acupuncturist. Hmm. So, you know, I said to her, like, what would a channel look like in that space? Like, what kind of products and services would you sell? Do you sell? You know, they have some of the clinics have a few retail items in there. So they refer people. Maybe they earn Amazon of referral, you know, for selling. But it's, you know, that, there are all these products and no real way for them to connect with their, their customers. So the idea that we came up with was to do a store for them and, and, and really using this shop type software, using Alt Health as a launch pad, but provide a free store of these curated products to any and all chiropractors, physiotherapists, personal trainers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the software enables all of this. So the idea is to how do we touch as many people and provide these solutions in the most efficient way. And again, the marketplace shares the benefit because the, the brands offer commissions 
to the marketplace to sell these products. Oh, interesting. And so the, the actual, the content creators are the people who would earn that commission. Jeff, nowadays with all the technology we have going on, like uh, I'll give you an example, the microwave oven, the cellular phone, I'm pretty convinced that there must be some kind of forms of chronic illnesses that are emerging because of this. I'll give you an example. You're talking on a cell phone for about 10, 15 minutes. You got it next to your, your ear. You can feel your head temperature rising. Now, that certainly, I don't think it's very beneficial for the human body. So are you in accordance with me that these waves given off by the cellular phone might be some kind of a form, a catalyst for causing cancer? I have, no, I, I have no idea. I, I mean, the thing about Alt Health is that it's going to be a crowdsourced community. So if, if people want to find information about that issue, they should be able to search and find it eventually. I mean, today it's not there. But the point is that it's, you know, this is a decent, this is Web 3.0, right. or at least the transition. This is a decentralized sales force. This is a crowdsourced uh, information source. Um, so we're just trying to create that environment so that it all can organically happen. So very, very I, I evaded answering the question because I'm a good lawyer. Yeah, but, I noticed that. But but so. but but because because candidly, I have no idea. But 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 somebody in the community might and may have data, studies, whatever that they could share on a place like Alt Health. So it may be there one day. I don't know. Because this is all hypothetical. And of course, even though uh, microwave and cell phones have been around for a long time, there aren't any real scientific studies showing any damage that these devices are causing to the human body. But, you know, just, just for the sake of conversation, if it takes you know, about two or three hours uh, I'm not much of a cook anyways, but just guessing if it takes you two or three hours to, to, um, to make a roast beef and you can heat that up like in, within a minute in the microwave, something's not normal there. Um, you know, with all the mole molecules being excited and warming up quickly and all that. And of course, like I said, there's no scientific study showing that, you know, these devices are causing any harm, but one can presume that there might be some kind of connection that eventually one day we may find out. Again, so, I, I don't know, but I'll tell you one thing. You know, our son was sick and uh, we tried everything. He went to 20 different doctors. He was misdiagnosed. He took wrong treatments. We tried, we talked to every snake oil salesman and tried every mm -hmm. lotion, potion and wave that you could imagine to try and find a solution. We took the sh shotgun approach because I guess we could afford it. Um, so I have no idea what's making him feel better because he, he is feeling better, but we threw everything in the kitchen sink at it because we wanted him, we were desperate to get him better. Yeah, so, I understand. And, and lots of people do the same thing or can't afford it. And that's a whole other debate and issue. And thankfully, you know, my wife and I have always been able to make these things work and being an entrepreneur, you kind of figure stuff out. Um, <clears throat> but in, in, I guess my point to you is that he has decided to live a, a basically a toxin free life. So Smart. like I can't cook for him in a microwave here. So he, you know, he, he lives like a monk. And I respect it and we support it. And, and our kitchen is kind of, it's, it, it's almost like we're kosher, you know, <laughs> but, but it's not milk and meat. It's, uh, it, it's, it's gluten free and, and uh, dairy free and, you know, and then the rest of us. Um, but it seems to help him. So who knows? He does use a cell phone. So I don't know what about that. Well, if but, you do use but, a cell phone. But, but he believes that, you know, Lyme disease for him and everybody seems to be different caused his immune system to decline. Right. And so he figured out through lots of research that if he put less garbage in his system, his immune system wouldn't have to work so hard. I mean, in simple terms that I can understand. 
And so that's what he committed to do. And so, you know, he lives a very clean life. He, you know, he's always the designated driver. You know, he, he and but he's feeling better and it's helping him. So, you know, I'm not arguing with success. Well, we're, we're just happy that he's doing better. Thank God. Jeff, time has flown. Unfortunately, it is time for us to bid farewell. But uh, we are going to have you back on the show. And there was an exciting first. This was a great pilot uh, project. And Esther and I, the audience, as we've seen the interaction going on over here, was a huge success. Uh, congratulations, yeah. Jeff, for all that you're doing. Fantastic. And we're, we're really excited to be associated with outhealth.me. And we can't wait to have further episodes uh, coming up. Absolutely. Very well, excited to be part of the family. We got lots to talk about because unfortunately there's many different conditions. We can highlight different products and solutions. We'll be the, you know, we'll be like Oprah, but for, <laughs> but for this vertical. Well, thank you so much to Jeff. Thank you, um, Esther. Thank you, Jenny, for producing the show. And thank you to the audience for joining us. And we'll be seeing you next week, same time, same place. In the meantime, God bless and have a safe week. Ciao Bye for everybody. now.